All right, guys, welcome back. This is uh, Trevor's 2888. Uh, to do a review for Magic 2013 today. Jewels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Third game in the series, um, based on a card game that I used to play quite a lot. Uh, for those people that haven't played the card game, it might be a little bit confusing, but hopefully the review will answer a few questions for you, let you know whether it's worthwhile. So, gameplay and controls. Right now, the gameplay is very straightforward. Uh, the tutorial is very concise, and there's a little button that you can press at any point, which will zoom in on whatever card you're looking at and explain exactly what everything does. So the gameplay, anybody could do it. Even if you've never picked up the card game before, you can still manage it, no problem. Uh, the controls, again, very simple, because it's uh, based around a card game. There's not really complicated things you can do with combo button combos and stuff like that. It's just play the game, basically. And all the buttons are going to be in the bottom of the screen as well as to what you can do. Um, I mean, it depends if you've not played it before. But then, like I say, if you've not played Magic at all, not even the, uh, the kind of real-life card game, um, like I say, there are tutorial levels, and they do really explain everything from the ground up. Um, so, yeah, it's a good game for people that have played it in real life, and also a good game for people that haven't even touched the card game before. So... Storyline and cutscenes. Um, well, storyline-wise, you've got the intro video, uh, which explains kind of who everybody is, who all the characters are and stuff. There aren't really cutscenes, but when you're going through the campaign, if you come up against one of the named characters, you come up against one of the main guys in the story, then uh, it will give you a little bio of them that you can read through and flick through and stuff. And all the... Uh, all the um, bio screens and stuff are kind of almost semi-animated and things like that. It's got a kind of interesting, interesting, unique style to it, like a drawn style for the uh, for the backgrounds and stuff like that. So, um, aside from that, the story essentially you're a planeswalker who is someone who has the power to travel between different worlds, and you can use magic and cast spells and and all that sort of stuff basically. And you can just uh, literally. Yeah, that, that's the story, really. I mean, it doesn't come across in the game very much. There is a story in the game of one planeswalker trying to rise up and take the rest of them out and all that sort of stuff. So there's a little bit of a story there, but you, you kind of have to read rather than watching videos. Now, the originality of this game, um, it's the third in a series. You had Jewels of the Planeswalkers, then you have Magic 2012, and now you've got Magic Jewels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Um, so... It's the third in a series, which makes it very difficult to try and stay original. But there are a lot of new features in this game that there weren't in previous versions. So, um, for example, let me think. I mean, the deck manager works a lot better. You've got a lot easier, clearer stats for the deck managers and things like that. Um, the actual campaign works slightly differently as well. Um, Originality-wise, the main thing is the uh, character customization kind of stuff. Well, not customization, but the stat screen that you can go to, and you can see your character's stats. You can um, see what cards you've been using, all that sort of stuff, like a review screen, which is quite a cool little addition. I mean, originality is it's pretty good, considering that it's the third in a series. I think they've done quite well with that. Uh, 1000G, uh, again it's an arcade game, uh, same as the others that I've reviewed so far. Uh, so it's not 1000G, I think it's somewhere in the region of about 280 or 290 with all the downloadable content on there. Um, with regards to getting all the achievements, I think they're pretty possible. I mean the challenges can be can be a bit of a, a struggle, a bit of a challenge, but um, once you get an idea of how the game works, you can really start to learn and you can pick it up fairly quickly. And some of the matches are quite difficult, but it depends what you want to do. I mean, the achievements are for beating people. You can beat them on any difficulty, that's fine, and you'll still get the achievement. Um, but if you're a bit of a fool like me, <laughs> uh, you'll play it on the hardest difficulty to try and get 100%, you know, try and get all the gold, the little gold stars and stuff to try and get it all completed. But now, aside from that, um, some of the achievements are game specific and match specific, but they're all fairly achievable once you have an understanding of how the game works. Now the other stuff, um, I like magic a lot, 
but it's an expensive hobby. Uh, it's one of those games where you buy a boost pack and uh, you get random cards in there, or you can buy pre-made decks and all that sort of stuff. So it's quite expensive, and uh, it can be—it's got a real random element to it. And obviously, the prices change. You get people taking it really seriously, and they—you know—this card costs this much, and da 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 da, and all that sort of stuff. So, to have it on a console in this format um, is really good for me. It means that I don't have to spend a load of money. The decks on here are very well constructed, so you know, rather than struggling through piles of cards and trying to make your own deck, um, th the decks they've made, the decks they've provided are really good. Uh, so for anybody that plays Magic and wants to kind of play it in a bit of an easier way or can't afford to play Magic properly, then this is well worth the investment. Just a one-off payment to get the game and then you know, you can play as much as you want and there's loads of different decks, seriously loads. So the final score, I've given it an 8 out of 10. The only thing that's let it down, it, it's an amazing game, the only thing that's let it down for me is the lack of a deck builder. Um, even just a basic deck builder would be nice. You know, you get a selection of cards and you can build your own deck, just for people that know what they're doing. Um, the decks that they provide, as I said, they're really good, but it'd be nice to have a little bit more freedom with the cards you're playing with and, and the kind of style of play and stuff like that. So, so that's the review for Magic 2013 Jewels of the Planeswalkers. So I hope you liked it. Like, comment, or subscribe, and leave uh, any of your own reviews below.